Capture the spirit of the holidays like never before with Rockbrook Camera. Nebraska and Western Iowa's premier camera store since 1975. Rockbrook Camera has the latest cameras and lenses, so you can preserve precious memories and learn new photography skills that will last a lifetime. Let the knowledgeable photography pros at Rockbrook Camera show you how to take great pictures of family traditions, the kids' sporting events, and the kids' big holiday musical. Rockbrook Camera is always ready to help with amazing customer support. Join one of their photo classes to learn the best tips and order a beautiful, custom-made gift from their photo lab. Capture the beauty and majesty of winter's snowy landscapes. Be prepared for holiday gatherings and be ready to capture all the family fun. Visit Rockbrook Camera today, one block south of 168th and West Center in Omaha, 70th and Pioneers in Lincoln, or online at rockbrookcamera.com. Rockbrook Camera. Great photography begins here. Oh, hi there. This is my first intro. I've been doing this podcast for well over a year now, and I've resisted doing an intro because I really don't want to make this about me, but... It looks like I can't get around that for some reason. Uh, it just doesn't feel right. So I'm doing an intro because on this episode, it's this is my second phoner. I'm not doing this by WebEx or Zoom or anything like that. So there's no video component to this episode. So I'm doing a little thing here just to kind of kind of just set this thing up. Because this podcast has always been really about you know speaking with artists, leaders, creative people. So I'm just kind of forging ahead and just trying to figure out where all this fits. Uh, this week, I spoke with Lawrence Gowan of the band Styx. He is their keyboardist, been with them for ages. And Styx is really just one of those bands that just keeps on creating. They're a legacy act, but they keep doing new things. So their latest album is called Crash of the Crown. And we spoke a little bit about that and how all that came together and also about performing live again, which I've been doing pretty much throughout most of this podcast. This this was kind of born out of the entire COVID incident and what artists have been doing all this time trying to make money and to perform. And they've been doing this online now for the last 18 plus months as I speak about this. And this is still kind of continuing because we're in this Delta variant stage now. And the artists are back out there, like Lawrence and Styx and uh, many other bands have come back and hit the road and have been doing live shows. With this episode, uh, audio only, because it was one of those things where this is the only way we could have done it. So quality is way different. Uh, I'm going to chime in here probably about a minute in. Uh, Because I miss some of it because, uh, you know, doing phoners is just not uh, really the best quality through all these mobile phones. So we had some dropout here. But I really, really enjoyed doing this. And Lawrence is a really great guy, incredibly creative, and finding out about how their process is, and it has been, and I would say this about a lot of other artists, how they were able to put uh, these new projects together during covid some some of them did get together in studios in places like Nashville or LA and did the live jamming and got it together and some have uh, traded files online through all kinds of different software so it's really fascinating and uh just really hope you enjoy it i've been really enjoying doing this uh i've been really enjoying doing this uh podcast uh the last 18 plus months and it's just been a real thrill so uh here it goes Lawrence Gowan from the band Styx. How's it going? Never better. How do you pronounce your last name? Is it Nebel or Nebel? Nebel. Nebel. I thought so. I thought the E would be hard there. Okay, yeah, Nebel. Okay. Yeah, Nebel, Nebel. is oh, a... Uh, that is a German <laughs> name. <laughs> ah, okay. And in fact, there is a village in Germany by that name. It means the fog in German. Oh, okay. Excellent. Well, that's good to know. You've, you've been all over the world, I'm sure. It's probably just... Uh... You know, I, I have been. I've been all over the, the northern hemisphere. I've never been, I've never been south of uh, the equator, funny enough, as I look at my travels. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's interesting. But, you know, you, you, you go to where the job takes you. That's... Uh... Yeah, we, can't, we were close 
to the equator. The closest we came was uh, was Aruba, which I know is, is technically part of South America. Here we are about a minute into the interview. We missed a chunk. We're talking about how music is the language of love, how you can go anywhere in the world and pretty much get the same reactions no matter where you're at. So here goes, and here's the rest of the interview. And by the end of the show, they're all incredibly alike. They look like whether you're playing in Sweden or Japan or America, by the end of the show, the audience looks exactly the same. They're always, they're all in the same kind of, you know, ecstatic state and, uh, Really, um, you know, it, it's it's kind of a great thing to see because you see how much music unites people. Oh, it does. It's 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 a it's a world language, and I, I'm yeah. sure you've seen that firsthand. That's just got to be fascinating when people, you know, they know your your yeah. lyrics in English and they don't even speak it. That's right, and you you, you, you hit the nose in the head, uh, the uh, the nail on the head, not the nose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I go, or you say, I guess you, you hit it on the nose. There we go. We'll go with yeah. that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the things that musicians in general, if I could it, it have to remember, is that, is that, as you just said, music is a language. It's a language that we don't fully understand. Even Beethoven said that. He didn't understand what the hell it was. And why it moves us so <laughs> profoundly in an emotional sense is, is a mystery. We just know it, it works. And if you get it right, it works to, to, to an incredibly deep level. So that, that's what we get to witness every day. Just incredible. Yeah, so sticks out on the road after all these years. And what I find so amazing is that you're still producing new material. And it's just so inspiring to see that. Because you know, I know how these legacy acts are. You know, they, they just rely on the old hits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we... We do rely on the, the legacy of the band. Yeah, that's another good way to put it. The legacy of the band is really what what we are, you know, what, what we are building upon. But, but we can't build upon it unless we have new things that that, that come along that we feel are worthy uh, uh, to present to people, you know, and and worthy of us being in the band together, you know. So right. we have to. We, that's part of the lifeblood of the band. I, I believe it's a two pronged thing. It, it's 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 live performance because of the communication uh, point you made the language. Uh, that is, is a fantastic bonding agent for, for, for band members. But secondly, the new ideas and the fact that there's, there's more coming, you know, for, you know, c- coming from up river, you know, oh, sure. uh, that, that, that keeps the life out of the band going. And these last two albums have really put us into a new era of uh, of uh, creativity with the mission and with Crash of the Crown, and you know, fortunately, the music industry itself has kind of straightened out a little bit, where they they now embrace the internet for what it is, and uh, our record company Universal um, had a great plan for Crash of the Crown by coinciding the release with us going on tour, and because of that, in the first ten days that the record came out on uh, you know billboard's rock album chart it hit number one and that's never happened with the band before in such quick succession and uh, we're seeing tremendous response to it those songs along with the uh the the, the legacy material uh on, on this whole tour you know we played last night in uh Toledo, ohio and, and you know same thing again crash of the crown that song went over as well as fooling yourself or miss america it was great to see yeah, and you mix it really well into the show too. You're you're mixing the old and the new, and it's just the the power, the energy. I I just like it's amazing. Uh, you were just here in in Alpharetta, Georgia, which is near Atlanta, which is where I'm at now, and the crowd crowd was just like so into it. It's just oh, yeah. This, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right by it. That's where our management office is too. So we we, we want to see that go well. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and it did. It, uh, it was a fantastic night. And that was so early on in the tour too. I think that was the second or third show back. So uh, good. Yeah, good to hear. On tour during the summer with uh, Collective Soul, who I spoke with uh, Dean from Collective Soul, and I just never heard. I mean, the excitement is just really there, and it, I just I love how much energy just pounds through both bands. It's and you still got it. 
Well, that's great to hear. Yeah, and we like touring with them. That we're under the same management company as well. And yeah, they're they're an excellent band, and that was that was a great pairing. You know, we did about the first, I think we did about the first eight shows together on that uh, on that whole thing. Yeah. So, Crash of the Crown. How uh, how did that originate? Uh, who's? It, it sounds like a real democracy. The band is really just all in on just producing this and, and getting it going. We have we have at our at our disposal some you know <laughs> some tremendous ammunition in, in the musicians that are that are in sticks, and you know we added. Um, this a guy named Willie Bankovich who, who produced the mission and produced the Crash of the Ground. We added him into the mix back in 20, well, officially, I guess around 2014, 2015, you know, when we started working on the mission. Um, and yes, there, there is a, when we look at each song, we try to look at, at you know, who can shine the brightest on this song or who gets, who gets a moment here to kind of step out and let their, uh, let their, their, uh, their talent kind of takes center stage. And that is how the albums have been crafted, quite honestly. That that and and hearkening back to as much of the sound of that classic rock era from the you know, arbitrarily from the from the seventies, um, as as possible. And it's it's a balancing act of, of those things plus writing songs that people can uh, somehow see themselves in the narrative. And you put all of that together and that, that really comprises what uh, what a Sticks album is today, at least for these last two albums. Yeah, I hear some heavy keyboard on this track called Save Us From Ourselves. And Yeah. Yeah. We played that, we played that one live last night. Yeah. That's got, uh, that was, you know what was great about that one? Was I was able to, um, to uh, use uh, my vintage keyboards on that that I have in Toronto. I have a studio in, in Toronto of like a, fully decked out studio. There's like a 1926 Steinway there and I have a Fender Rhodes uh, from a company that, that was built by a company called Vintage Vibes that's in New Jersey. And I was able to layer the two of those, you know, uh, in the, in that, that sound that you hear at the top of the record. And then of course it transitions into the B3. And then we've got some, we've got some cellos kind of pumping throughout, you know, some string cellos, you know, uh, plug in things and also my Mellotron is in there. So, yeah, this, uh, it's, it's quite a little concoction on that song. We played, as I said, we played that live last night, Robert, and it yeah. went over really well. Sweet. Yeah, that's good. Do, do you mix up the set list? Is it is it very, uh, just very well rehearsed? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we, we, we do mix it up. You know, like, like there are there are songs that you'll, you'll hear at every Sticks concert. You know, you're never going to go to see Sticks and not hear... Uh, Renegade and Come Sail Away and uh, you know Grand Illusion Blue Collar Man Too Much Time Fooling yeah. Yourself those are in every show they yeah. have to be you know they, they, that's we know that a large faction of the audience have paid to hear those songs and we love playing them still believe it or not oh yeah and, right. uh, they're, they're well they're well crafted songs in every way uh, but yeah we do We there are the rest of the set really are alternates you know where we'll play for example, we played Save Us From Ourselves last night. The night before, we left that one off and we played Reverence from the new album. Um, last night, we played Man in the Wilderness from, from Grand Illusion, from the Grand Illusion album. The night before, we did uh, Sweet Madam Blue from uh, Equinox. So, yeah, we, we, we vary it, you know, night to night, uh, you know, probably three or four songs per night. Yeah, you got to have those staples in there. Everybody's coming to hear that, but it's it's so great to scramble it up. I'm sure that keeps you on your toes and keeps you fresh. It does. It, it does. It's, it's necessary. It's also something that is, it's good for the audience because we get so many people that follow us around. <laughs> yeah, that's if true. If, if if a show is within you know, you know up to three four hundred miles, in fact, even more, because sometimes they fly between shows. It's good that they get they get something slightly different the, the, in the next night, and we're aware of that because you'll see the same faces like, "Hey, didn't you have second row last night?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's good to vary it like that so they know that we we never do the shows just by rote. 
Yeah, Reveries is a great track. Such an awesome guitar. I, I, I always wonder, how, what, what are the nuts and bolts of, like, when you're putting this uh, album together? What, what goes into that when you're all in the studio? Did you all record in the same place? Did you send files with each other? How did that come about? Well, on, uh, on the, two, the last two albums, The Mission, we were all together in the studio in Nashville. On this album, Tommy... Uh, Shaw, myself, and Willie Vankovich, we had kind of, we had mapped out all the songs prior to the pandemic. We'd mapped everything out. We basically had them ready for uh, the rhythm section to come in and do their parts and for JY to come and blow some cool solos mm. and chuck down the bass. But the pandemic hit, and after about, about at about the three-month mark for the pandemic, we thought, oh, you know, we thought this would be over with, you know, two months ago <laughs> and it, <laughs> yeah. it looks like it's going to stretch on indefinitely so we better take another look at this album and see where it sits and when we did you know we, we realized yeah these, these songs feel really timely and let's figure out a way to finish them in our s studios uh, you know in whatever cities we live in so uh, as the Zoom calls became more and more second nature and as we discovered an app believe it or not, called uh, Audio Movers, you can link studios together to where you can play in real time and hear each other in in my studio in Toronto. I'm listening to the guys in Nashville who are listening to Todd Zuckerman in Austin. And we were able to pull it all together using the technology that at our disposal, but also, you know, having the comfort of our own kind of working environments. And so it actually, it actually benefited the record instead of... Uh, Instead of being a remote feeling, it actually kind of pulled us together in, in, a, in a really unique fashion. Wow, did you ever think the technology would be like this? Because I've been in the video business for 30-some years now. It has changed immensely. I'm sure from the days when you were on tape to now, it's like you probably could never even have, have envisioned this. Quite honestly, no. I, re I remember as far back as... Um, Far back as the 70s, I do remember that there was one remote recording, I believe it was of a Rick Wakeman um, a church organ solo. And actually, I, I, it, like whenever a band wanted to use a pipe organ, I think that was the only time they did actual remote recording like that. I'm not sure if he was able to send it uh, digitally. Obviously, it was probably too early for that. But, but at least the... the um, the, the, the impracticality of, of doing any remote recording in the past those those are long and long in the rear view mirror yeah. and and quite honestly no I I, I, did, I never really envisioned that the, the digital age would have this this far reaching a, uh, uh, a, a uh, an implication you know to the point where we could actually finish an entire album with the feeling like we were together and yet we were not, you know, it's, it was quite, it's quite remarkable, quite honestly. Yeah. Wow. What a powerful opener. The, uh, the track, the fight of our lives, that, that is just really unbelievable. How did that come about? So yeah, that, that one became the opening track because it just seemed like the right line to sing uh, right off the bat with, we, we will not give in, you know, yeah. and we opened it. We actually open our shows with that right now. That that short little song, it's only about a minute, 45 seconds long or something, it transitions straight into Blue Collar Man. So it's a really, it's a really great opener, you know. Uh, the song itself, I think, was, it's almost, almost like a, I think initially, because I wasn't part of the writing on that one, but initially I think it was kind of like an attempt at something that's almost like a sports anthem. But, but now, it, once we recorded it, and, and given the circumstances the world has endured over the last 60 months, it's more of a, it's more of a life anthem. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. It's, taken on, it's taken on a bit of a larger uh, dimension because of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're all sounding original. It, it's, it's unbelievably fantastic. But I, I feel like there's bits of like uh, ELP in there. You got some traffic feel. It brings me back yeah. to when I used to listen to a lot of Yes records. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Those, those, you know, Sticks have never been a band that have, that have shied away from showing their influences. I think, you know, all bands, all bands do to some degree. If you really peel back the uh, 
you know, the onion, so to speak. But, yeah, you know, yeah. there are moments where we really do, we, we get, we get a, a, a kind of a, a kick out of, out of plundering as much as we can from that classic rock era when Styx first emerged, you know, nearly 50 years ago now, just a few months away from 50 years. Um, and all of that, all of that idiom is, uh, to us, is like part of the, it's part of the, the, uh, it's part of the palette that we want to kind of use, and and we do. And it kind of, as I said, it, it always puts a grin on our face. You know, I, the the ending of the title track, Crash in the Ground. I, I clearly, you know, I just felt this is this has to have the kind of bravado that Freddie Mercury would use when he yeah. wrap up the song. So you know, I don't sound anything like him really, but the spirit of of that way of wrapping up a song is definitely quite evident there, and. Uh, you know, we enjoy it, and, uh, you know, audiences seem to as well. Yeah, you could feel that theatricality. Another track that really, yeah. I, I just love it, Long Live the King. That's that's a great riff in there, too. What inspired that? That one, again, I'm not part of the writing on that one. Uh, that's, that was Will's song, Will, who produced the album, and now in the band. He, uh, he had that song, and... We just thought that this is a great. It, it ties in so well with the kind of uh, um, the idea behind the album, which is renewal. You know, so many of the songs hint at the spirit of renewal, and "Long Live the King" is certainly a very dramatic way of uh, of uh, uh, presenting that. You know, so and it just works. It's a great song. Beautiful, beautiful work. I really, really appreciate you speaking with me. So, what is the future? Uh, you wrap it up with Collective Soul, then you uh, uh, team up again and tour this fall. How, how's how are the future plans looking? No, we are we are currently on tour. Actually, like I said, we you know we we've played now. I guess coming up on about to be thirty shows so far since you saw us. And, uh, and no, the the schedule is very heavy at the moment, and uh, we're, we're just going to continue playing right through this. For the rest, of, really, up until right through next summer, we don't really have a break on the schedule at the moment because uh, people want all the shows that we missed over the last <laughs> over the pandemic year. So we're we're kind of cramming them in there, but at the same time, Robert, we're you know aware of the fact that this this could this could stop any day because of the, the the situation where uh, you know if, if this if if the COVID situation gets to to a point where they have to. Uh, make changes, you know, we, this, this could all stop. So hopefully that won't happen. Yeah. Hopefully you can keep going. And, uh, this is a great, powerful tour. A lot of dates. Uh, it must be a lot of work being on the road still, but I'm sure it's, it's a labor of love too. It is a labor of love. It is. And, and as far as it, it, it's hard to use the word work in a touch this because there's so much fun. <laughs> that yeah. It, it, it's never felt like, uh, like you know, it's exhausting, but it's exhausting in the best possible way. That's that's the best way I can put it. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's the kind of exhaustion everyone should experience in their life. Awesome! I really, I really appreciate your time. This has been fantastic, and sticks on tour. Uh, just yeah. amazing. Tommy Shaw, James Young, and Todd Zuckerman. Yeah. Chuck yeah. Pinozo, it's just a great lineup. And let's not forget Will Ivankovich. That's yeah, just a g- yeah. great band. Okay. Thank you so, so much. All right, Rob. All right, Mr. Neville. Nice talking to you. And uh, we'll see you somewhere up the road. Stay safe on the road and keep on rocking. Talk with Cheers, you soon. Man. Take care. Cheers. Sure, bye-bye. Okay. Like I said, I had a great time. It's, it's great to speak with somebody from an act that, to me, is quite legendary. I'm sure to a lot of other people, too. But it's great to see these guys back out on the road. And this, I, I, you know, I, I just really enjoyed this album. Uh, it's just got so much energy. I was telling him that. You know, I was trying not to fan out. But uh, you tend to do that when you get somebody who has, uh, who's part of a, an outfit that uh, has a legacy like that. Uh, the talent is just unreal. If you get a chance, go out and see Sticks out on the road. They're going to be performing well into 2022, barring any changes or anything like that. Um, I think they'll continue doing these live shows for a while. And, and they'll continue recording. Uh, they seem to really have a lot of gusto. 
So get there, get to your nearest venue, and see Sticks. Uh, also, you know, I interviewed uh, Dean Rowland from Collective Soul, and they had all played together uh, this past summer, it's summer 2021. And uh, just a lot of fun speaking with these people who I've listened to quite a bit on the radio, the old traditional terrestrial radio. So it's been just great. Continue listening. Take care. Go forward for your next truck or SUV and find an easier way to buy with Woodhouse Ford today and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford. Lease a 2023 Ford Escape Active for $397 per month for 48 months and 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 stock fee due at signing. Security deposit waived. Tax title license extra with approved credit. Expires 1204-2023.